welcome. Welcome to the Unlimited Way. And today, we're going to talk about your mindset, how to shift that. We're going to give a five-step formula and also how you can transform your inner dialogue, the language that you use yourself from being your worst enemy into being your best friend. Or we can go further, the higher self wisdom within, all integrate within. So let me ask you this. Here in the Unlimited Way, we always like to reflect upon it and begin with a question. Are you aware about how limited or negative or positive or abundant or loving is your own thinking? Well, I remember that I read last year the book of Brianna Wise that's called The Mountain Is You and this is actually something that relates completely into the team of today. Perhaps you are aware that sometimes you have an inner dialogue between the devil version of you and the angel version of you and sometimes those thoughts will conflict with it. Or you may have seen someone walking in the street or perhaps in the mall or in an open place and you see that they are just talking to themselves. This is something that we all do. We're not always aware, but thoughts are clusters of information. They are real. And this is something that scientific community defines. And I'm talking about the scientific Caroline Leff. But energetically, I see that every time when my third eye open, I think about something, the energy transforms into an energetic container, but my aura also shifts into that. If I'm grounding, guess what? I'm going to look like a tree. If I am thinking on someone that I dearly love, I'm going to look like a heart or pink or something soft, maybe like a rose or something that will reflect what I am feeling in the thinking in relationship with that belief. If, and that happened to me, I had an energy attack once. I used to work in an office. Some, some coworker greeted me very lovely and she hugged me, but when she hugged me, I saw octopus arms that just anchor in me and slashes my aura in a fraction of a second. But guess what? In the same fraction of a second, I reflect equally. So I grow octopus arms and I attack her back. The result was that I felt drained after. I felt like dizzy. I felt weak. And I was like, hmm, what is that? <laughs> I didn't have a lot of experience back then. And I realized that I just not only defend myself energetically because I didn't say anything to her, never ever, but I become what she was streaming towards me. So energetically, we're always going to be pulling from the different fields of energy in the quantum field, right? So this is something that I have read from the scientific community, it's from philosophy, and there are different definitions about soul, about mindset, about thoughts, about the spirit, if that exists or not. But I tried to summarize a little bit into what I think and it can serve us in this episode. So our mindset is the ending result of our personality that blends our soul, but also our spirit. They're both interwoven together in our own body. And it's not that easy to define where the soul ends and the spirit begins. But the body, it's like the container, the filter to which that energy it is streamed through. So in the body, it is where limiting beliefs and blocks 
would be manifested as real and through that the energy that it is outside because if i am doing a stream from meditation and let's say that too many people gather with me but i also see the energy of the ones who will see that meditation in the future in youtube let's say the next year so i am streaming and i'm also aware to keep the space sacred if anything dark or anything comes i'm in charge and aware of clearing because i'm connected but that may happen all the time maybe if i go to the street maybe if i go to visit my family maybe just in any activity that i do and how much of that time we're not aware about what happened and then when you realize you're drained or you're tired or you're blocked and that is not the unlimited way to go to life so i have a few cards here if a thought is a cluster of energy it will be as if a radio station that you will just tune into your car if you are still using that or different playlists that you may have in your Spotify account, right? So if I am in relationship with something and I think, oh my God, that's bad, then I'm going to look like that. I'm going to create a negative energy, a negative charge, a negative cluster that will run through me. And this is scientifically proven that destroy the electromagnetic field. So, so scientific says we cannot prove that God exists or what it is, the electromagnetic field that humans have. We cannot prove or negate that exists. All that we know is when someone dies, it disappears. So every time we think on negative, we bombarded ourselves. And maybe it's just in relationship to something that happened around, let's say the news or something that you see. But if in that moment, let's say, let's say that I'm driving and someone just hit my car a little bit and I'm going to instantly react like, now what? Why do you do that? You don't know how to drive, right? Maybe that's a normal reaction. But maybe I can say, well, it wasn't like a big thing, I can take it to fix because I have insurance and it's all good. So if you say that, you balance with the positive thinking. And those are seeds we add into our own container. And things will happen out of the blue, like when you have rolling dice. Maybe the fact that something happened while you drive it could be any, any amount of energy in, it doesn't matter. But when you are aware of it, you can bring what it's missing to have balance on it. So I'm gonna explain this right here. Let's say that I am thinking of love, right? But, love in relationship to what is going to be positive or in relationship to what is going to be negative. So maybe I said, I don't like love when it is obsession. And that is a valid statement. But if you notice you say something like that, because the language that you speak, it's very important because it's the one that defines if that is a positive or a negative experience in you. If I said that statement, I don't like love when it's obsession, but I do like love when it's uplifting or in higher frequency. So if you end your statement with the necessarily belief that adds balance on it, then you're going to be in harmony with all that arises. But when you say, I'm not love, for example. What happened is each word is going to have a frequency that is going to stream through you. And even though a thought is going to be invisible, is very visible in you. Because maybe you can get upset with someone, it has happened to me, and then you have a stomach ache. 
or that you get sore in your throat or you get headache because something happened, you get stressed out. And that happens because your mind will look like that. It will be busy with a lot of things that we are running. But the emotion is the effect in motion through our own belief system that will be reflected as the positive charge or the negative charge. When you have a positive thought, this scientifically proved, you'll begin to repair all of the areas in your electromagnetic field that you destroyed before. And if you are a psychic person and believe in inner healing and do your work, then you are going to be always looking for that method or formula process to be in your own alignment. So this is a formula that I have come out to use today. So if you are aware that there is something that you dislike, that you react negative, that you feel limited, that you just like oh, can't stand it. It could be a person, it could be a situation. The first step, it is to be aware about what it is exactly that you need to transform. And you have to discern because sometimes the reason of the problem is not what we think. Like for example, oh, I'm late because it was a lot of traffic. No, I'm late because I didn't took enough time for what I needed to do to get into where I needed to go, right? So just by being aware is the first step on healing. When you do healing, let's say in your kidneys, you have something that are not functioning. And then you realize that kidneys are related to fear and you are aware of all the fears that you have, then you are already in your journey of healing. Regardless if you had Reiki or went to the doctor or whatever technique you do. The first step is to acknowledge that it's something that is not that rightful in your reality. The second step is to observe and reflect what are the circumstances around it. For example, maybe you were born with something in your kidneys because it runs in your family, right? And perhaps it's the consequence of the way you eat or the way you behave, or it's just something generically. Or maybe it's something that you develop because uh, you had an accident or something happened, right? And the third step, it will be to choose how to transform it. In a spirituality, we call that healing. Maybe a normal person will choose to go to therapy or maybe to read about something or to investigate online. The first step is going to be to place yourself outside of the problem. Because when you are part of the problem, you cannot get rid of yourself. But when you realize it's not my fault, it's just the circumstances. It was just what it was around, what it was part of my journey to expanding my soul or it was already created when I was born or it's something that happened in my city or whatever, then you are able to shift a problem for a circumstance. And the last step is to be committed to your own transformation, being kind, being gentle and being patient with yourself, healing, it could come instantly in 20 minutes, or it may take years or months. It depends on how much you are allowing that aspect to shift. So baby steps toward that area is going to help you to get there, but also to reshape your whole programming energetically, emotionally, mentally. And just to summarize, between me and my desire, I can be my own block. In fact, one of the greatest fears, it is the fear of being happy because it may not last, so I may not have it. Because if I have it and lost it, then it will hurt so much. So I would just hold myself. 
and it's something that you never expect that fear of being happy or having whatever you want it will be one of the greatest resistance that will be something that block you from having that but that will be unconsciously because if we use a tree or an iceberg all of the roots for that distortion will be in the unconscious because if we would be aware of it, you fix it. Let's say that you were doing a tea and accidentally you add salt instead of sugar. You will throw it away and then we'll make another one instantly. But if you're unconscious about it, you will drink it and say, mm, something happened to the tea today. <laughs> I don't think I quite like it. So in the subconscious are all of the answers for whatever we feel limited block or in need of a shift first step being aware of what you want to shift second reflect upon it notice how do you react when you are triggered do you get frustrated do you get all over the place do you get anxious do you just get paralyzed do you react the defensive because when you know how do you react you can find an antidote let's say that I react being controlling. If I react being controlling, then my antidote is going to be flow and just be with whatever arises. And, and then ask myself, today, don't plan anything, Gretel. Just go with whatever it is. And that could be the fifth step to do everything daily. Once I know how to react and what it is the antidote, for example, if I have anxiety, then I need to have calm. If I worry, I need to have faith, right? If I feel insecure, I have to feel safe. If I am upset, I need to find peace, right? So whatever it is, the feeling in the negative opposite of you that do not serve you, then what is the antidote for that? And that is the simple answer to your healing. And that is the shift that happens here. And when you put yourself in a separate position to your own problem, you begin to have empowerment and you step into the autonomy that things happen, but I can rectify it like equally as if I accidentally add salt on my tea instead of sugar and I can just make another one no big deal but we make the big deal because it's part of the programming it's part of the illusion but underneath all depending on your soul or your spirit if you're an old soul or a star seed or an ancient soul or have ascended 25 times this is the temporary journey for us to learn something so destiny won't be just having a tea, right? We'll be enjoying my tea. And maybe one day saying, I don't want tea today. I want juice or coffee or hot chocolate. So every choice, the journey itself is the ultimate ending. Don't take things that personal. This is something that my guys said to me, Gretel, life is overrated. And I'm like, <laughs> so just go day by day whatever it's easy that is the next step when you set your action plan daily to do just a little bit maybe an affirmation maybe a meditation maybe a brilliant exercise maybe have it to change that to change, but more than to change, to create foundation for where you want to go, then going there is going to be easy. And I want to share this story. I was reading about, this is a father that used to live in Japan. I don't remember his name. And he was a person that had a very limited income. He would cleanse a school. But every day, he will, every day not, every check, he will just say just a little bit, just like a coin. 
and that was going to be the inheritance from his children. When he died, he had millions of dollars to give to his own sons. And he was a person that would earn the minimum, but it was because he had consistency and he was disciplined on, I want to save, I want to save, I want to save. So it doesn't matter if he was put in a thousand dollars, a hundred, or just a penny, consistency is going to be what will help you to get there. I hope you guys like it. If you would like to support this program in not only a LinkedIn way, but being incredible as Encoder Frequency, like, comment, share, also let us know what other themes you would like for us to create. And if you are drawn to know more about me, you guys can find me at EncoderFrequency.com. Hope you guys like it and see you into the next episode. Thank you for being here. Thank you.